Recently, we had the announcement of Microsoft Copilot Plus PCs, which include this fancy thing called an NPU, a Neural Processing Unit, also known as a dedicated ARM-based Snapdragon chip that is separate from your CPU and your GPU, but much more importantly is what uses it, Microsoft Recall, a system which screenshots every single thing you do on your system to be processed in an encrypted local database that basically lets you search back through the entire history of everything you've done on your computer, which is cool and lets you find a lot of neat things, but is definitely not going to have any long-running side effects that were not really considered. Since then, a lot of people have gotten their hands on Recall and started playing around with it to see what it does, how it works, and all this fun stuff. And it looks like some of the things we initially thought were a little bit wrong. In some cases, in a good way, but in a lot of cases, maybe worse. Now, the first question you might have is, how are people using Recall if they haven't yet got their hands on these Copilot Plus PCs? Well, it turns out, would you be surprised, that the whole NPU thing might have been a bit of a marketing shtick, because it was a bit of a marketing shtick. That's not to say the hardware doesn't do anything, but it's certainly not a requirement. Making great progress enabling recall on current ARM64 hardware, no fancy XLE in sight. Should theoretically work on Intel slash AMD too. OEMs only received ARM64 specific ML model bundles, so there's not so much I can do yet. Basically, the only reason why people are not running it on x86 hardware yet is the model only runs on ARM, so if you want to run it on x86, you need to do ARM emulation. Now, this isn't them accessing some leaked software, doing things that Microsoft wouldn't be happy with them doing, and ooh, they're doing something bad. They did a write-up on how you can do this yourself over on Tom's Hardware. And here is another user doing the exact same thing. Thanks for the awesome thread. I don't have an ARM machine other than my Mac, but I was able to get Recall running in an ARM Azure VM very easily. Again, the NPU isn't just vaporware. It is going to be doing something on the hardware that actually has it. Not having that chip is going to come at a performance cost and likely a power cost. But it seems like there is absolutely nothing special about having these NPU chips that makes recall possible. It's just the NPUs are more optimized for this specific kind of workload. Now, considering the history of Windows 11, this is to be expected. Obviously, they're going to initially want to market these new devices as, look, Ooh, fancy Copilot Plus PCs, buy a new computer, buy a new computer, spend lots of money, we need your money. And then down the line, like with Windows 11 and its hardware requirements, they loosen things up to go, ooh, wait, maybe, turns out it actually was possible to get it working on these other things. Hey guys, enjoy now. Now, a lot of what I'm going to say today is going to come from a write-up by Kevin Beaumont, otherwise known by the at handle Gozzy the Dog. This article is structured like a Q&A, so we're jumping around quite a bit and probably skipping a bunch of different things, but I'll leave it linked all in the description down below. So the first very important question is how the data is handled, because a lot of people are worried maybe it's not going to be processed on your local system and... I still don't fully trust that down the line, they might not start collecting things, but at least right now, the data is processed entirely on your device. They made some smart decisions here, and there's a whole subsystem of the Azure AI code that processes on the edge, as in processes on your machine. But there is a very important issue with how the data is stored. Cool, so hackers and malware can't access it, right? No, they can, but it's encrypted. 
When you're logged into a PC and run software, things are decrypted for you. Encryption at rest only helps if somebody comes to your house and physically steals your laptop. That isn't what criminal hackers do. For example, InfoStealer Trojans, which automatically steal usernames and passwords, are a major problem for well over a decade. Now these can just easily be modified to support recall. So when you are not logged into your system, it is encrypted. But when you are logged in, it's not. Now, how do we know that you can just very easily access the database? Well, <laughs> people have been doing that. What we have here is a SQLite database, and because the user is logged in, is not encrypted. Microsoft told media outlets a hacker cannot exfiltrate Topart Plus recall activity remotely. Reality, how do you think hackers will exfiltrate this plain text database of everything the user has ever viewed on their PC? Very easily, I have it automated. Here are a few more screenshots of the recall database, plus a link to the thread. Now, where do you find this database on your system? It is a file in the app data in the core AI platform folder. Now, to be fair to Microsoft, you do need to have admin rights to access the file. You can't just go and randomly access it as just a normal user. Except for the fact that Microsoft is aware that most people run as full admins on their system. They have been trying to address this for a very, very long time, trying to make it more secure. But in its current state, it is still a bit of a problem. And all it takes is a user to say, okay, I see a prompt on my screen, click continue, and do not read the prompt. Or for another UAC bypass to be discovered because UAC bypasses are absolutely not rare. Now, all of this would just be funny if it was opt-in and didn't really affect any users who actively went and did something stupid. But Tom Warren, the senior editor at The Verge, noticed something. This is the out-of-box experience for Windows 11 new recall feature on Copilot Plus PCs. It's enabled by default during setup, and you can't disable it directly here. There is an option to tick open settings after setup completes so I can manage my recall preferences instead. That being this little toggle right here. Why you cannot set it on this screen, I don't know. Well, I do know because they want people using recall, but if you don't go to your settings as soon as you install your system, <laughs> recall is running out of the box on Copilot Plus PCs. Now that by itself is bad enough for the regular user, but what about in the corporate context with group policies? Surely, surely it is not enabled by default. Well, you can probably tell where I'm going by my reaction here. There was an option called Disable AI Data Analysis. If you disable, or don't configure this policy setting, Windows will save snapshots, as in it will save screenshots, not like drive snapshots of the screen, and users will be able to search for or browse through a timeline of their past activities using recall, as in the default setting of the group policy is recall is enabled. Now I say was, not because they changed this, but because they renamed it to something that sounds a little bit nicer. So in the policy editor, it was called Turn Off Windows AI User Data Analysis. It's now called Turn Off Saving Snapshots for Windows. That has a lot less um, baggage attached to it. Something that really helps with stealing the data is how large is the database. It compresses well. Several days working is around 90 kilobytes. You can exfiltrate several months of documents and key presses in the space of a few seconds with an average broadband connection. But if a hacker gains access to run code on your PC, it's already game over. 
if you're on something like an info stealer at present, they will automatically scrape things like credential stores at scale, hackers scrape rather than touch every victim because there are so many and resell them in online marketplaces. Recall enables threat actors to scrape everything you've ever looked at within seconds. During testing with an off-the-shelf info stealer, I use Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, which detected the off-the-shelf info stealer, but by the time the automated remediation kicked in, which took over 10 minutes, my recall data was already long gone. You need to remember that when people are being hit with things like info stealers, it's not necessarily that they installed something intentionally on their system, and then it turns out, oh look, it's malware, it's stealing my data. Oftentimes, it is abusing some other system, whether that be something weird and broken in Discord, an RCE in a game, or any other case where people can inject things into your system with you having no idea that it happened. And it is not that people couldn't already steal data before, but Recall makes it so much easier to steal everything you've ever seen. Does this enable mass data breaches of websites? Yes. The next time you see a major data breach where customer data is clearly visible in the breach, you're going to presume the company who processes the data is at fault, right? But if people have used a Windows device with recall to access the service, app, whatever, hackers can see everything and assemble data dumps without the company who runs the service even being aware. The data is already consistently structured in the recall database for attackers, so prepare for AI-powered super breaches. Currently, credential marketplaces exist where you can buy stolen passwords. Soon, you'll be able to buy stolen customer data from insurance companies, etc., as the entire code to do this has been pre-installed and pre-enabled on Windows by Microsoft. And as I said last time, this wouldn't be a problem for me, and this wouldn't be a problem for you. We are tech-savvy people, and we can see that, hey, this should be disabled, this should never be run, and if it is going to be run, make sure you configure exactly what you do not want to be captured. But we are not the target of this security breach. Go to your parents' house, your grandparents' house, your friend who has no idea how computers work, or anybody else in your life who is not very technically savvy, and look at their Windows PC, look at the installed software in the past year, and try to use the device. Run some antivirus scans. There's no way this implementation doesn't end in tears. Who remembers the days of countless browser toolbars being installed? These didn't go away because people learned how to use a computer. These went away because browsers disabled them. There are still plenty of other ways that people get malware installed on their system because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how a computer works. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with these people. But Recall puts them in massive danger when they already were in massive danger anyway. Now, a fun little point is about how things are being culled from the collection. So we know that DRM content is not going to be collected. We also know that private edge windows will not be collected either. Turns out that also applies to other Chromium-based browsers as well. Doesn't apply to Firefox though. But they do state on their website that Firefox private windows shouldn't be collected, so... Probably a bug? But I don't know how they didn't test this. Fun little side thing, KeyPass XC is not collected in Recall. Not because of anything that Microsoft did, but because KeyPass XC on Windows treats itself like a DRM window, so it just doesn't get collected by Recall. Now, this doesn't apply to other password managers that don't do that, so I guess use KeyPass XC. Now, something a lot of people have brought up online is GDPR and how Recall just wouldn't be allowed to happen in the EU. I am also not a privacy or legal person, but all of the data processing and all of the data collection in its current state is being done locally on your system. There's probably not any sort of issue there, but when a data leak happens, we'll see if that changes. And considering that more Copilot Plus devices are absolutely on the horizon, 
don't expect this to go away anytime soon. It's going to be a problem. It's just a matter of time to see how long it takes. So who is excited? Because I know that I certainly am. I'm a Linux user. It doesn't affect me. But I do certainly like checking out what is going on in this space. So let me know. If you're a new Linux user, did this cause you to swap? Were you considering swapping for a while? If you've been using Linux for a long time, let me know how happy you are that you're not a Windows user right now. Let me know down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And is this going to be the time that people actually try out Linux? Only time will tell. The answer will probably be no, though.